Let's start on the China question then that Critty raises. The loan prime rate unchanged, not a big surprise given that the PBOC held their main rate, what, a week ago? So why the further downside coming through for Chinese equities? Starting to look and starting to resemble panic now when you look at the moves that we've seen. Yeah, and the, the most obvious uh, answer for markets is always more sellers than buyers when we're going in this direction, Tom. But I think that that's really the case here. You know, we've been seeing this big exodus of international investors. We've also been seeing um, local funds closing down or being liquidated as well. So that's draining more of the investment from the Chinese equities market. Now, one other thing going on under the surface, which is really interesting, but quite nebulous and difficult to unpick, is this idea of uh, so-called snowball trade or structured products and those are typically mm. higher yielding um, sort of investments that you can make um, that the, the will pay you a decent yield just so long as certain conditions aren't met which are usually a long way out of the money when when they're struck so a big decline in equities is one of them and then compared with where we are when some of those deals were arranged they're now falling to the bottom of that to what's called a, a knock-in level it's not entirely clear whether there are people deliberately targeting those levels to try to push the market through them or whether as we ping through those levels it's exacerbating the selling pressure. But between the two of them, the snowball products are actually triggering some of this uh, snowball effect that's having that uh, downward uh, drag on the Chinese equity markets. So that's the Chinese equity market. But then let's go cross assets here, Paul, because when you see this kind of risk sentiment in the other parts of the world, commodity markets are usually in line with it. You're not just seeing the oil price, you're seeing it in natural gas and agricultural commodities. Why is the commodity sector left out of it? Is there a China read through as well? Yeah, well, I think commodities is really interesting because uh, with all of the risk off news that we had around the Middle East over the weekend, you might expect uh, that there would be something of a rally in the oil market today. Instead, it's all about the supply demand dynamics again, really, you know, more sellers than buyers again here. We've got a big Libyan oil stream uh, coming coming back online and that's putting more crude oil supplies into the market. We've got uh, relatively subdued and complacent natural gas consumption across Europe, partly because of the economy, but partly also because but this last week, uh, uh, except it, we've had pretty benevolent weather conditions too and plenty of gas still in storage. So all over it, the uh, commodity is still kind of, uh, the, the demand isn't really taking it higher and the supply is kind of comfortable. So we're sitting in this kind of stasis level. Paul, very briefly, uh, the BOJ, of course, that decision tomorrow and then the ECB on Thursday. Where is your focus? Yeah, I think we're going to be looking very carefully at the BOJ's guidance. What are they going to be telling us about the timing of liftoff? Are we getting closer? Are they confident in the economy? ECB, I think Lagarde has been very clear on uh, we're waiting until the summer. So, uh, you know, we might well uh, take a pass on this one. Rendezvous in the next few meetings, as Trisha used to say.